Hi, it's Paul Thomas at PitCon 2011, talking today with uh, Dwayne Sward. Dwayne is the Senior Director for Thermo Fisher. Dwayne, thanks for being with us today. Pleasure. Dwayne, uh, a couple of years ago I talked with you, you were with uh, Ahura Scientific and uh, you were introducing the TrueScan and today we have a new version of TrueScan, you're now with Thermo obviously. Yes. Uh, tell us about the new version. Yeah, so it was actually in 2007 we introduced TrueScan, um, the world's first GMP uh, certified uh, portable Ramon. Uh, the whole intention was to reduce contamination and inspection uh, and make it a lot more efficient by having a handheld. What we've introduced actually was announced publicly two weeks ago and this is the first public showcasing of the instrument. This is TrueScan RM, which stands for Ramon. Um, taking the concept a little further, the blatantly obvious part of it is it's half the size, half the weight, and a typical sample takes at least five to ten times faster than the first generation, which was already magnitudes faster. So the whole idea is to get it a lot more efficient. Um, what's new about it? I mean, what uh, inside, what's different? Yeah, so essentially to get it this small and robust but without compromising any of the analytical capability, what we've got is three core components in the instrument. One is a laser, the other is what we call the light collection optics and the detector, and then there's the spectrometer. Without going into too much detail and patents, essentially we've collapsed all of those core components into one module. And by doing that, we reduce a lot of the signal, uh, uh, the, the noise effects, so increasing the signal to noise ratio, giving us a lot better sensitivity, so it allows us to get faster scans, and it actually is more conducive to chemicals that previously for the first generation true scan weren't really possible. So things like high volume excipients like microcrystalline cellulose. You could do it with the other true scan, but it would take about five minutes. This takes about 15 seconds or less. So now the possibility to do 100% inspection of many, many, many drums and do it in a lot faster fashion, but still having no contamination is now even more possible with the new RM. And obviously it's been uh, important and popular with a lot of companies for raw materials inspection, but also anti-counterfeiting as well. It, it is. Um, publicly, there's been a lot of press of its use in uh, Nigeria, uh, where unfortunately there's a lot of horrific things, not just with blatant counterfeits, but with substandard medicines. So things that are compromised in humidity, UV vis, um, you know, it's just you know, um, temperature and um, um, exposure to sunlight can compromise vaccines. And then there are people that are just basically um, um, repackaging expired product. So the sensitivity of the instrument is such that even a tablet or a vaccine can be flagged as basically substandard, whether it's a counterfeit or just something that's not fit for human use. And that's very attractive to people, not only in brand security, but human health, hospitals and clinics. Now, uh, you talked about the expanded capabilities of this, but there are still people that will say, well, Raman can't do everything, right. what about NIR? Right. And now you've got a solution for that as well. Yes, yeah, so it was actually a year ago that Ahura Scientific was acquired, and about six months after that, Thermo Fisher acquired Polychromics, which uh, was an, an innovator and leader in handheld near-infrared, ironically about 500 meters from our factory at Ahura. Uh, so we'd meet our friends at Polychromics for lunch every now and then. Um, so at Ahura we were doing handheld Raman and FTIR, and with Polychromics they were doing near-infrared. So now what we have is the Thermo Scientific handheld microphaser. So essentially about 90% of pharmaceuticals, raw materials, excipients, solvents, API, are conducive to Rama. But there are certain things that just will never work, that just uh, chemically are not conducive to Raman. That's where near infrared can be a great candidate and an alternative. And again, you can just be in the warehouse and point and shoot through the bag. So the whole idea is if we can keep it in the warehouse, no need to quarantine and, and transport anything to the laboratory, the whole concept is do it in the warehouse, reduce quarantine, go straight into production. The near infrared also allows people to do some quantitative capabilities as well. So if somebody has a complex mixture, but they need to authenticate the mixture uh, quantity, um, you can do that with the near infrared, whereas the Raman is strictly a qualitative test. So the combination is very appealing to people trying to get to 100% and do 100% in the warehouse. So you've got the whole spectrum covered pretty much, but uh, can you give us a hint about the future? What's next? What kinds of things uh, are we hoping to see in the future? Well, um, one of the things that we've tried to be very mindful of is just keep it focused on the end user application. So for raw material and 
inspection. We don't require anyone to have a PhD in analytical chemistry. It literally is point and shoot. From logging in, it's a biometric from a fingerprint reader. So I can log in with my fingerprint by point and shoot. We're trying to make that easier. But then there's probably better things we can do with regards to integration into the LIN systems, to better reporting, workflow management. So right now it's a very fast instrument, but the instrument's only part of how you improve your raw material ID and increase your quality and inspection processes. So integration with back-end systems, and certainly we have those at Thermo Fisher with uh, LIMS and integration systems. Um, we get asked about wireless capability. You know, untethering it from the computer would be nice. This is not a wireless instrument. Um, the workflow of the near-infrared is a little different. The way the barcode reader works and the way that the, really the instrument works is different because they came from different places. We want to try and harmonize things in a way that the user shouldn't know, need to know or care. Is it ROM on, FTIR, NIR? And you'll see things just become a little more agnostic and uh, just making it easier. Good. Well, we'll check back with you in a year or two and see how those things are going. Thanks so much, Dwayne. Pleasure. Thank you.